Welcome back to the channel. You may know the movie War of the Worlds. And then you may also know these tripods. And have you ever wondered what this sound is like? I will play you a short scene of this movie. So let's check it out. Wow! If I heard this sound the very first time, I was really impressed and I wondered how it was created. Was it some kind like a ship's horn or something? I never knew. But recently I tried, I just tried to recreate it on my synthesizer here. And you know, I found a way. If you want to know how to reproduce this sound, then stay on the video and let's do it together. So let's start. Unfortunately, I only have this one camera currently, but um, you don't need to know, you don't need to see actually these buttons because I will explain it step by step. Maybe you have a different synthesizer or you even have a VST synthesizer. So anyway, the knobs will look different on your synthesizer. The important thing is you need a FM, a frequency modeling synthesizer. Otherwise, you cannot really recreate this sound. So I have my Nordlead 4 here, which is able to uh, have a frequency modeling option. It only has two oscillators, so I can only have one oscillator and another one which is modeling the first one. So it's not a very complicated uh, sound to recreate. But anyway, let's see and let's start now. So the first step, choose the initial preset, which sounds like this. I will move it down one octave like this because the sound where we need to have it is actually this note A and then the second tone this tripod is making is a C. And then we are starting with oscillator 1. We are going to choose the sine waveform which sounds like this. So you need a quite good speaker currently to hear this sound because it's a very low note. And for oscillator 2, we also choose the sine waveform without any detune and without any pitch, which uh, basically makes no difference in, uh, other than just adding the same waveform again. And now we make sure only oscillator 1 is playing. So the mixer only plays oscillator 1, oscillator 2 is silent. But anyway, we need to set up oscillator 2 because it's going to modify oscillator 1. And as I said, we need to uh, use the frequency modeling. And I will activate it here. For the Nordlead 4, it's a little special because it has three intensities of frequency modeling. And I'm going with the lowest intensity and set the knob to 5.0. So the knobs on the Nordlead 4 have a range from 0 to 10. So maybe your synthesizer have, uh, has a, a range from 0 to 100 or 0 to 127. So you roughly know where to put uh, the knob. So in this case, right in the middle. And now the sound will uh, sound like this. I will uh, play a little with the frequency modeling knob that you know what is happening. So now we only hear we only hear the sine wave and if we turn up the frequency modeling we actually hear the oscillator 2 modifying the oscillator 1 which we are currently listening to. Oscillator section is set up right now. Let's move on to the low frequency oscillator and we use it uh, in this case oscillator 2 because it provides on the not lead 4 a uh, random waveform and we want uh, as a target the oscillator 2. We want to reach a slight modification in pitch controlled by the, oscill by the low frequency oscillator and I set it to, to a rate of 3.7 and to an amount of 2.0. 
So of course I have set up here some notes because I could not remember this by heart. And now maybe you can hear a little difference, but you should hear that uh, it's slightly um, changing the pitch of the oscillator too in a random waveform. And then let's go to the modulation envelope. We are going to use this to set in the, the very first uh, the start of the node where this tripod tries to find his current pitch. And we're going to set this up to oscillator 1 and 2. So both oscillators are controlled. Attack is 0, the decay 3.5 and the amount negative 7.1. So now you should hear uh, uh, a slight ramp up until the synthesizer finds the correct tone. Let's try it out. And now you could imagine where this is going. But let's go on. We, we will come closer. Let's go to the amplification envelope and set the release to 3.5 to have the sound just not cutting off when I move my hands from the keyboard. So it will sound like this. So you can hear the sound is just staying a little longer and fading out. Then let's go to the most important part, which is the filter section. And there we're going to shape this characteristic sound of the tripod. So on the Nord Lead 4, we're going to use a letter M filter, which is a modulation of a MOOC synthesizer filter. You, it, it's basically a low-pass filter, so you can try out on your machine, on your synthesizer, which sounds the best. I think within the Nord Lead, this filter is the warmest and uh, most realistic, in my opinion. So letter M is set up. And we're going to start with the cutoff frequency. And we are going to set it to 4.3. So I just go to zero and I will open the filter up and you can hear what, what is happening. Sound is coming. 4.3 is exactly right here. And then we are going to the resonance. And what we want to do here, we want to get these overtones, which are not really um, correct for this note, but very characteristic for the sound of the tripod. So I set the, the resonance to zero and, then I'll, and I will increase it just slowly to a value of 8.2. You can hear the overtones are coming. Can you hear it? There it goes. Now it gets interesting. So if we play now the second tone of the tripod, which is the C here, you can hear something is wrong. So actually the overtone uh, created by the resonance is not moving along the keyboard. Therefore, we have the function in, the, in this synthesizer, which is called the keyboard track, which we set to 1. That means that the resonance frequency will just increase on in the frequency like the, the distance of the notes. So this overtone will move along the keyboard. And I will, sh and I will show you what, what does it mean. And now the different tone. So you can hear the overtones are moving now along with the keyboard. Then we are going to set a little envelope amount of 0 0.5. We are doing this just to make the attack a little slower and I set the attack to 2.5. Sustain is 10 and release is 10. To not have any modifications on the filter when I go away with my hands 
from the keyboard. And it will sound like this. And now, one important slider or knob, we need to apply some drive. So some overdrive, I have a range of 0 to 10 and I will use 10 <laughs> and then it will sound like this. We are close, we are really close to the original sound. Let's use some compressor effect, maybe 5.0 on the synthesizer and then of course we need a lot of reverb which I activate now and I have set it up to uh, amount 5 and brightness 2.9 so not so bright and it would sound like this oh now, now we are close but we can improve it even further by using the unisono function what does it do? I set it to 3, so actually we have now this sound three times reproduced by each note I'm pressing and they are slightly um, panned and detuned, so it's even more full. And let's listen to it now. You may have noticed that the second note actually is much softer. You can go back in the video to hear it again, the original. And there you can hear that the second note is actually without these overtones. So we can also um, make it on the synthesizer. And we are using the control wheel for it. So I will set the control wheel to reduce the cutoff to 4.8. And the frequency resonance is 6.8, like this. So now when I play the first note, everything is like it was before. And if I play the second note, I will apply the control wheel, just like that. And the frequency and the resonance is brought down. And also on the original sound, you can hear that the second tone is slightly pitched up towards the end. And I will do it first, make the sound softer with the wheel and then just apply a, bit, a little bit of pitch bend. And then we basically have the end result and I will play it now. So enjoy it. So no ship on just a synthesizer frequency modeling. If you want more videos like this where I recreate synthesizer sounds, of course I will also go and recreate some synthesizer sounds known from the music industry, of course, because that's what I'm doing all day long. Then please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and give me a comment. Are these videos nice or are these not so good. I'm happy to see you on the next video and wish you a lot of fun recreating the sound on your synthesizer. See you on the next video.